ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. Um, there were 10 of these that were identified by Vincent Valetti and Robert Anda when they did a study on a variety of patients um, at their health clinic who were reporting difficulties with some major physical ailments and illnesses, um, and they had divulged some childhood experiences that seemed to be getting in the way of them making progress. And so a study was done to see, you know, what is the nature of this? How widespread is it? And what are we really looking at in terms of the effects on health? So these experiences are things that you, most people would consider traumatic, some of them. Things like sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, witnessing domestic violence, that sort of thing. But then there's some others that people don't always consider traumatic. And those are things like having a parent with drug or al alcohol abuse problems, um, having a parent who was incarcerated, divorce, which we know happens at a very high rate. That can also be very uh, disruptive and stressful for a child. ACEs are very prevalent, and that was one of the things that was pretty surprising in the research. 60% or more of adults have experienced one or more ACEs. This was found in the original study back in 1997, but it's been replicated many times across many populations since that time, so we know that it's a valid statistic. ACEs, um, are, anyone can be affected by ACEs. They are found across uh, races, across gender, across socioeconomic groups, across cultures. ACEs are considered, for this reason, uh, a public health ec epidemic by some people because they're so widespread. What other disease or incidents happens in 60% of our population? In 2016, there was a child and adolescent health measurement initiative that occurred and it was found that in the city of Cincinnati, 31.1% of children ages 0 to 17 had experienced two or more ACEs. This statistic is concerning for a lot of reasons, one being that we just don't want children to have to go through those things, but the second being that the national average is 22.6% of children. And so in Cincinnati, we're at a, at a significantly higher rate than nationally. If you compare that statistic to one that was taken in Boone County, Kentucky even, that number is 22.7%. So it's pretty close to the national average. So again, Cincinnati children are struggling because they've experienced a lot of adverse experiences um, at a young age, and we're talking zero to 17. So, you know, there's still some childhood left for a lot of these kids, and we would like to make sure that more ACEs don't happen. So a prevention approach is important as well as an intervention approach. One of the things that the Tri-State Trauma Network does, and we currently have involved a Cincinnati Public School in this, is our trauma-informed care learning community. This is a 12-month process where a, an agency this, at this, uh, in this situation, a school, receives a guided consultation, assessment, and training around how to become more trauma-informed as an entire school approach. And that would include things like policies and procedures, environment, staff training, um, referral to mental health services, involving the parent and student voice in the process, as well as making sure that there are some performance measures that are tracked so that we can see that it is having an impact on things like suspension and expulsion rate attendance. The school that we are working with in Cincinnati Public Schools does have a very high suspension and expulsion rate. They are looking to overhaul their discipline program because keeping kids out of school is not what helps them. We want to keep them in school. We want to help them with their behaviors. We want to be that calm, nurturing, self-regulating uh, voice 
and change agent for them. And so we're really happy to have one of the high schools on board for this learning community. They just began their work in August. And so we're not even a quarter of the way through yet, but we have high hopes for them because the team is comprised of um, not just the school staff, but other supportive organizations within the area, joining forces for children, Mind Peace, and really just the whole district um, is on board with this, including the superintendent and the assistant superintendent. And so we really appreciate the buy-in from all levels in order to make this happen for hundreds of children who attend this high school. ACEs have a very strong impact on children's development. Um, they actually affect the developing brain. So there are neurological changes that happen when children experiences, experience ACEs. Um, the brain is still developing in childhood, especially during the ages of zero to three, zero to five. And so structures that are being developed during that time in the brain either become exaggerated. Um, those would be things like the fear center, or they can be underdeveloped, like the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for executive functioning, things like attention, things like understanding cause and effect, things like planning out, um, planning out your time, and social interactions with others. So that's what starts the process and then because of those neurological effects that leads to difficulties that children will have with learning and with social and emotional development. ACEs have been shown to be correlated with a variety of physical and mental health problems that often show up later in life. These include heart disease, lung disease, cancer, suicide attempts, depression, anxiety, uh, promiscuous sexual behavior, teen pregnancy, STDs, and at the most e extreme, um, the effects of ACEs can include death. People who have experienced six or more adverse childhood experiences are likely to live 20 years less than their peers who experienced no adverse childhood experiences. So when you are working with a child or encountering a child who has experienced multiple ACEs, the first thing to remember is that you want to take a compassionate versus a combative or punitive approach to their behaviors. Children who've experienced ACEs have gone through an extreme amounts of stress. And when someone is punitive or combative towards them, it just serves to escalate their, their emotions and behaviors. And so it's very important to be a calming force for these children who often feel very unsafe and insecure with the world. Nurturing and developing a positive relationship with a child who has experienced multiple ACEs is the number one thing you can do to help them. The positive interactions a child has with an adult becomes very much a protective factor for them and helps to build resilience, which serves to insulate them when there is further stress in their life. One thing to think about when you're talking with children who have had multiple ACEs is that some of them may need to be referred for mental health therapy or counseling. These would be the children who have extreme difficulty handling their emotions and behaviors and their reactions to other people and things around them. You would want to refer them to a mental health therapist or counselor who is trauma-informed, which means that they understand the effects of trauma and toxic stress on children and that they've been trained in approaches that are most beneficial for children who've experienced trauma. Yes, the effects of early ACEs can absolutely be reversed. One of the wonderful things about the brain is that it's plastic, and that means that when we change 
certain things about our behaviors um, and we create new behavior patterns. We create new connections between different parts of the brain. Um, a, a behavior pattern that is repeated becomes more ingrained in the child's repertoire of behaviors. So to relate this to something that's not mental health, let's say that you have no idea how to play chess and someone teaches you how to play chess and then they practice it with you many, many times. After about a week or so, if you've been practicing diligently, you're gonna be able to play chess with some decent amount of skill. The more you practice, the better you will get at it. The same is true for children who've experienced ACEs. What they're lacking is a lot of self-regulation, um, the ability to handle their emotions and their behaviors and to cope with the things that have happened. So if we have adults who are teaching children ways to calm, ways to manage their behaviors, ways to just understand some of the feelings that are going on, and then the adults take the time to practice that with the children repeatedly, um, not just once, like, oh, I showed you how to do that. You should be good the next day. It's not how it works. It's many, many times. Do we get to the point where children can incorporate these skills as part of their own behavioral repertoire and don't need adult assistance anymore? So there is absolutely hope for kids who've experienced ACEs, but it's also up to the adults to make sure that the kids feel hopeful and that they have the skills they need to create their life the way they want it to be. At the Tri-State Trauma Network, we promote trauma-sensitive school environments, and that's one piece of trauma-informed care. Trauma-sensitive school environments are ones that screen children for trauma, that refer children appropriately to mental health services, hopefully located within the school building, so as to make them more accessible to children and families. Trauma-sensitive schools also develop safe and nurturing environments for children who often feel unsafe because of their past experiences. So it's very important that everybody who interacts with that child in the school building acts towards them in a compassionate way, in a way that makes the children feel safe and understood and accepted for what's going on in their life at that point in time, but also wants to help move them forward to being better able to cope with what has happened to them. We also look at parental involvement um, and if the children are older, um, child involvement in what the policies and procedures and environment should be like at, at the school. That's also part of being trauma informed is, is that the consumer, in this case the student as well as the family, has a voice in what they think is most helpful to them during the school day and within the school environment.